Tonight on Trunk Hill Radio, we have like way too many stories to even list, but we got stories from Gajira, Slipknot, Atreyu, Blink-182, possibly even more. Who the fuck knows? All this and more coming up on Trend Kill Radio. Bow to it. What's going on, everybody? This is Trend Kill Radio, brought to you by the Foundry Concert Club and Fantasy Entertainment Complex, right here in Cleveland. I am your host, Sean Ryan. And I am Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> and we have so much to get into, but we'll just get into it right now. Um, I, I, fuck, man. Let's just talk about the sad news first. I just want to get it out of the way. On, on the heels of Slipknot releasing a new single, Unsainted, just last Thursday, and revealing their new video, New Mask, playing Jimmy Kimmel Live, everybody in Slipknot should be just like in cloud nine right now, except for one guy, and I'm sure the rest of the Slipknot family, clown Sean Crahan, we found out just days later, May 18th, his daughter Gabrielle had passed away at the really young age of 22. Uh, just before we even get into that story, like we're not like shock jocks and stuff and get into like being cruel and everything like that. That is that is a terrible fucking thing to actually happen to someone. And because we are in the music community, I mean, that all kind of hits us a little bit closer. Right. You know, we want to be sensitive to the issue, obviously. And, you know, everybody's been really respectful of everything with, you know, going on with this family. But I mean, every, everybody knows somebody that is has passed away just way too young way too soon and it is really unfortunate this girl Gabrielle Gabrielle Crahan she was absolutely gorgeous you know it's it's a real uh yeah even recently she was posting where she had just hit a five month sobriety you know check mark she got her chip and everything and you know she was dealing really well with the situation she was dealing with and it's you know really sad news it was reported by TMZ that last Saturday ambulance and fire had responded to a possible OD in Hollywood and they found her they tried to resuscitate and it just didn't work out. I don't want to get into anything further than that. I just really just wanted to get any of the bad news out of the way, but I mean, from everyone here at Trent Kill Radio, like, our, our thoughts and condolences go to Sean Crahan, his family, and the entire Slipknot family as the rest of the metal community. Sean, and, you know, on behalf of his family, was very, you know, thankful for all the support he's been seeing from the, you know, the music community and things like that. We went on to say, end quote, you have all proven that there is empathy, positivity, and strength in this community that we all call humanity here on Earth, end quote. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly hard to deal with and, and to be in the public spotlight and go through all this at the same time. Right, and to lose, you know, your daughter. You, you, you have a you have a child. I have a child, yeah. I mean, to, you know, to lose a, a daughter, your your offspring, and then just still be able to, like, go on and actually address, you know, the public, knowing that you're, a, you know, a public figure. I mean, it's got to be tough. I know, and they have the tour coming up very soon, Not Fest, that's going to be going on. Uh, if you watched our last episode, Chris Jones, he had talked about what, when they're going on tour and stuff, and I... I <sighs> What more can you really say? We just want to just move on from that right now. And let's just get into get into fun stuff. Shit on the floor. Time to get swifty in here. More rock news. So let's just do it. But anyways, let's move on to a little bit more. A little, uh, I don't know. I don't even want to say it's like funny, but I mean, okay. So we live in Cleveland and our sister city, Columbus, right in the heart of Ohio. They have had a festival called Rock on the Range for a very long time. Things happened. It's now called Sonic Temple Art and Music Festival. I was going to go to this festival to go see The Prodigy, but Keith Flint had passed, and I mean, like, that's really what killed it for me. I was almost tempted to see System of a Down, because I'd yet to see System of a Down. If you have festivals going on in your city or something where a bunch of big rock acts, it's probably the same. You know, where Bring Me the Horizon and the Foo Fighters. Although, uh, did you see that Bring Me the Horizon and I think someone else didn't play on the third day because of weather conditions? But I digress. A very interesting story happened Saturday the 8th. 18th when this was going on. Gajira. 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 But there were some weather problems, and this is always the thing that bothered me with Rock on the Range is because, like, it's always really cold. It's done in May in fucking Ohio, so, I mean, you're, you're expected rain, wind, hurricane, snow, tornado, like, something is going to happen. <laughs> it happens every fucking year. Do, do the show organizers even live in Ohio? Have they ever been to Ohio? Do they understand what goes on here? I'm surprised there wasn't a fucking <laughs> blizzard. But it was a very windy day. The next day was even more chaotic but um, Gajira, they faced a lot of high winds and they had a lot of pyro going on stage. Fire! 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 And let's just get to the point. Their guitarist Christian Andreu was pretty gnarly burned by a shooting ball of fire that got picked up by the wind and just went 
bitch! <laughs> One of the five flames sent in the face. <laughs> Slap! Slap! <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. So why you got a face to burn or singe anyways? <laughs> <laughs> Lamb of God vocalist Randy Blight, he was there. He was going to come out and do a song with them. And he did. Uh, he was a little late uh, to the party, but he goes on and says, quote, Yesterday at Sonic Temple Festival, my brothers and Kajira took the stage, destroyed the place. I lost track of time and forgot where they were playing. When I realized they were on, I went and ran to the stage with my camera. I got there, and right as they were playing Backbone, their tech was like, here's your mic, bro. And I took off my glasses, put down the camera, and ran out on stage wearing flip-flops. And he goes, flip-flops, not a great way to rock out. <laughs> so he <laughs> so got rid of those. Suddenly there was a huge... Huge. Blast of flame. Huge. Huge. Blast of flame that scared the fucking shit out of me because Randy had no idea that pyro was going on. Anyways, I got done singing and I shot a few photos and I ran to the dressing room and got a different camera lens. When I came back, the tech was like, oh, fuck, dude, Christian <laughs> got, like, blown up. Like, almost like James Hetfield in like 91 blown yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying about that, yeah. <laughs> he goes on with the quote and all that kind of stuff, and don't worry about it, it's blah, 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 blah. What apparently had happened is they have these just huge fireballs right out of the front of the stage, but it was so windy, it just took this giant fireball and just blasted him. Apparently, according to the, you know, the reporting from Randy Blythe, it just kind of singed him that he's just going to have some peeling, a little missing hair, missing his eyebrows, but... He's all smooth now. Looks like a seal. Hmm. Yes, indeed. But yeah, not like Hatfield, who got fucking melted and was... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, James. It was uh, a nice <laughs> chemical peel for James right. Hatfield. You know, he was he was prone to acne when he was a child. There's a lot of pop marks. But yeah, Christian, it's undetermined what kind of burns he got, if they were first or second degree burns. But either way, like you could see some pictures on where he was very red, like like a really <laughs> bad sunburn or something. So I'm kind of just assuming, you know, one and two, you know, missing some eyebrows. He went right back out on stage after the song was done. Like a trooper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how fucking metal is that? We have some video footage here. My friend Tara and her husband, they were there in the bleachers. Unknowingly, they saw the incident. They were so far back that they didn't even fucking realize that was what actually happened. And you can see a lot of the footage here. Christian is expected to make a full recovery. Gajira has not canceled any dates as far as we know. So yeah, that's the end of that story. Next! Next! Yes, our next story, we have a Treyu. Uh, we have some problems with the lead singer, and they're not good. As a fellow, well, I don't, I don't even know if he's tall, but I'm tall, and I experience back problems, like, on a daily basis. Just give me some drugs and surgery! I mean, right. I got numbness in my spine some days. It's just... It's it's not good for anybody. Yeah, no matter. It's, it's not yeah. fun. Right, this is just, it like, just sucks. this is just life just fucking raining down and being terrible. Terrible yep. For anybody. Yep. But a Trey U frontman, Alex Varkatsis, I hope I am not butchering his name, Alex Varkatsis, he released a startling video today where he announced that he would be unable to tour with a Trey U in Europe. But the reason because is he has some, some pretty detrimental spine issues to his vertebrae L5, I think it was. He's got a herniated disc. Uh, and just from years of touring, he has just screwed this thing up. His whole back has just been fucked. It seems in the past couple of years, he has just had more and more and more and more problems. I'm having back spasms. Right. I mean, it's the reality of touring, and it's like a lot of people take for granted the fact they they that's a band, a Treyu. I mean, it's a fairly popular band. You know, a lot of people would assume they're doing fairly well, but he's probably you know they probably don't travel under the best conditions. Oh, that there, that uh, that's an RV. Yeah. Yeah, I barred it off a buddy of mine. They probably live a very rough touring life, you know, mentally and physically. And, you know, it takes its toll over time. It just does. Even if you're just a vocalist, let alone, like, the guys that are probably lugging around gear and stuff like that. Even if it's just a vocalist, it just tears into you. It's just, I wonder, like, what he does on stage that has maybe caused all these problems. Right. Like, I mean, he's a screamer, though. And, like, I mean, you're, I know, like, I mean, you project, but you don't, like, scream. And, like, you know, doing that for years, especially the way he screams, he li li lives on his vocals. It sounds like a fucking... Like, he's got a great voice. It's a great voice. I mean, it's like his scream sounds like a fucking garbage disposal, but it's in the best way possible. Even his but, singing voice, he's a baritone tenor. Like, yeah, yeah, I, he's I got mean, a good singing voice too. But by, I mean that he's got great range. Yeah, that push pull between like always screaming, always singing. I mean, you 
you're using your whole body as an instrument. I mean, it takes a toll on top of just touring. But Alex went on and he, he filmed a, a small Instagram video, but a lengthy story uh, that we're going to just try and paraphrase for you. So in the video, he went on to say, you know, it's it's not easy to say it. I'm sorry, I can't make the European tour at this point. My body and mind need to heal in order to continue with all the things that we planned for 2019. I owe you all an explanation and it will be lengthy. And he went on at length. It seems <laughs> like they have multiple plans for 2019. He's just recognizing he's he's beat. He has a lot of issues. And if he's going to do anything later, he has to stop right now. Yeah. So it's important to emphasize that he seems that like he recognizes that it's not he's not done, but he needs to stop. The band has commitments to tour, so they're going to continue to tour. He damaged his vertebrae, L5, totally fucked. He kind of fixed it, but he didn't. And then he found out that he has a herniated disc and he's got a hernia. They did an operation to fix his spine, but they could not tackle the hernia at the same time. It wound him up in a walker, you know, like uh, Herbert on Family Guy, you know, just like the, the walker. Gosh, gosh, bagosh, it's a brand new paper boy. That's a mighty full sack you're carrying. So he will not be going on tour in Europe. So he goes on to say, my brothers in a tray will rock on without me this run. It'll be a very special one-of-a-kind experience with Brandon up front and Porter screaming. Brandon being uh, their drummer slash clean singer and Porter being their current bass player and also a backup singer. He goes on to say, I have an upcoming epidural therapy and a follow-up appointment to discuss the impending possibility of a hernia surgery before disrupt. Yeah, so you heard it there. This dude's back is in bad shape. I lost all feeling in the left side of my body! With back problems, I mean, those things never really bounce back fully. It is really unfortunate. I am super glad I didn't play sports when I was younger. Because <laughs> my brother, he's 6'8", he played sports his whole life, and his back is fucked. Hi, Marty. Enjoy your problems for the rest of your life. <laughs> I am curious to understand what they mean by Brandon up front because as the drummer, does that mean they're gonna showcase him with his drum kit somehow or is he actually stepping off the drum? Yeah, it's, it's interesting to think about. It. I'd love to see how that actually pans out too because um, yeah. Yeah, Brandon's like, a, he's definitely like a core songwriter, you know, obviously clean singing, drums. He's also done a lot of production work. He plays guitar. He's done all these things. The keys, the drums. Yeah. Oh my god, like yeah. Fun fact, uh, my cousin Kaylee, she grew up in California and she went to school with this guy. One time when I was a teenager, we went to the world famous Agora Ballroom in Cleveland <laughs> and we saw a tray you very early on well before they had any notoriety I think there was four or five of us we were one of like 10 people including the sound guy on a Saturday afternoon at like 3 p.m. seeing a tray you on one of their first tours even before suicide notes came out people in like my circle had uh, had shown me the fractures on the side of the porcelain beauty their, their like rough live little EP they pushed out and just real quick on our final story we were just want to bring up Blink-182. We talked about them last week that Tom really wants to join the band again. He plans on it even. It's a very uh, ballsy move on his part. Right. <laughs> I'll be back. It's like, he yeah, I'll be back in the band again. No, no worry about it. <laughs> Forget about it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but now in an interview in 91X San Diego, Tom went on to say this. So Tom followed up by saying, It hit the press last week. Yes, everybody. I will play with Blink again. That's the whole plan. I talk to Travis all the time, and I talked to Mark just the other day, and we're always discussing what makes sense and when. He also added that there is creative differences in what I do and what my brothers in Blink do. It's just going to be a fucking thing. But a question has been asked to Mark about the 20th anniversary of the Mark, Tom, and Travis show their live album you know they go do you think that there's a possibility that you guys would maybe go on tour together and just bring the original three well not the original three but the main three yeah. the the, the three notable. everyone cares about yeah what's his name steve or who knows <laughs> <laughs> the guy that lost <laughs> whether they're gonna get back together and mark went on and responded quote that's a fantastic idea who knows what's really gonna go on i mean i, I know blink has this upcoming tour and angels and airwaves have their upcoming tour but i mean we're talking next year here and I don't know. I wonder how Matt Skiba feels about all this. I wonder if he oh. just knows his place and he's just not going to play. Or, you know, or if Tom will just get wrapped up in more alien conspiracy <laughs> things. Okay, and that is all the time that we have for this week's installment of Trend Kill Radio. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like the show, subscribe, share the show, go in the description on this YouTube video and you can find our Facebook page. Even if you are just watching playing on Facebook, go to our YouTube page and subscribe. I am your host, Sean Ryan. And I am Jimothy. And this is Trend Kill Radio. People will bow to it.
speaking of Tom, so just as a side note, so I was at a family party recently. I was talking with my grandfather. He's in, you know, he's older. He's in a like, you know, just reading about anything. And he starts telling me about, you know, he's reading about like all these alien conspiracy kind of books and things like that. And he's like, yeah, have you ever heard of this offer Tom DeLong? I'm like, <laughs> what? You mean Blink-182? <laughs> he's like, what do, what do you mean? It occurs to me that I've just had a conversation with someone that knows Tom DeLong with no associated to Blink-22 whatever, but knows him for his alien conspiracy. <laughs> and it was the wildest thing fucking ever. <laughs> the tragic case of Keith Flint plas- plassing. Fuck! <laughs> I was going to go see- brown cow. I was going to go see the prodigy, but Keith Flint plass. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> the human torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> Over at Sonic Tapical... Uh- Typical. <laughs> what is going on? Am I, have a, am I having a fucking stroke right now? Oh my god. I think I'm fine. Really, I think I'm fine. <sighs> Hungry? <clears throat> Sleepy? Gassy? Is it gas? It's gas? It's gas, isn't it? Shush.